out, so I don't know what to do with myself. I told my wife, you got the last one out. She's going out. And he's Pastor He's Pastor Godson. So I said, Pastor, if he come back, he gonna go back to live with you. <laughs> I he said, no, nah, son, you better send him somewhere else. But I thank God, I thank God. Amen. 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 said he gonna come back, I'm gonna do like that old commercial. When the son come back, they even change the room. <laughs> they told the room yeah. man, man, the exercise room. Yeah. I'm gonna tell all the rooms there. I don't care what I tell them to. But then whatever they ain't gonna be a room no more. <laughs> <laughs> we pray to God. Amen. Pray to God. Amen. 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 We thank God for seeing your faces. You look good, although I can't see you behind me. The mask, if you got two teeth, put it together. Amen. 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 At this time, we prepare ourselves to look toward the hill that's coming out of hell. Bye, bye, bye. We can pray to God that He come in and have yes, us. Because it's not about us. No, not about us. We see going on in our world that's not about us. Where the God tells me, if my people are called by my name, yeah. Yeah. it's time for us to pray yeah. and call on that name, which we know is able to call Let us pray. Yes. Most wise, everlasting, turn the gracious God. Thank you, first of all, Father, for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us another opportunity to make it here, Lord God. You blessed us from one Sunday to another Sunday. Anything could have happened during the world, Lord, Thank you watched over us. You protected us, Lord God. You provided for us. And now, that, Lord, you preserved our lives. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough, Lord. Yeah. Because you've been so merciful, well, so well, gracious well, yes. us. Lord, Even when we wasn't acting, Lord God, you were still acting. Right? Yes. So Father, we thank you, Father, thank because you. you always act right, Lord God, because you are righteous. Yes, you are. Father, we thank you. We can borrow thank some you. of your righteousness when our yes, righteousness is filled with your hands. So Father, we ask that you would continue to bless us. But Lord, we want well, to invoke the Holy Spirit to come in well, and well, have well, its own well, divine well. way. Well, Father, we realize we cannot have well church fresh, without the Holy Spirit. Lord. We ask that the Spirit of the living God fall yes, fresh sir. anew upon us. Let it fall from the pulpit to the door of God. Well, well. Let it fall on our pastor, dear Father Lord, God. Yes, Let you sir. take him well, down in the deep treasures of your word. We thank you, Lord God, for how he has prepared himself for us yes. to stand behind that yes. sacred desk. We thank you for your word, dear Father Lord. God, that's going to come to him, Lord God. Yes. But we thank you for the anointing that you have to put upon yes. his life, Lord. Yes. We pray that you will continue to yes. use him, Father. Yes, you, Lord. We ask that you use all of us, Lord God, yes. in the sound of my voice, Lord God. Because, Lord, we are living in serious times, Lord. Yes. And it's time for us to pray. It's time for us to get down on our knees yes. and scuffle up, Lord God, and pray that you will hang our own divine way. Father, I thank God that I am reassured well, well. that you still a God that sits high, yeah. but you show them to look low. Yeah. I thank you, Father. I ask, Lord God, that you will continue to have down the right way in this earth. That whatever we do, Lord, yes. we thank do it to please you. Right. That you may be pleased in our time and the way we have service. Thank you. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us, guide us to all truth. We be so careful. Give our man the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because it belongs to no one else but you, Lord. We ask these in the blessed of Jesus Christ's name. And all of God's children say amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Glory to God. We're happy to be here this morning. Our, let us stand for our responsive reading. Found in our bulletin. Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. Amen. Amen. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. We give thanks for you, and you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, yeah. may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Yeah. I your understanding and being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his call, and what riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us for who believe according to the working of his mighty power. In Christ, when he raised him from the dead and sat him in his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things and to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen.
a change. A change has come over me.
It's good to know for yourself that a wonderful change has come over you. Amen. It's a personal thing. Amen. You got to know that you know that you know that you know that a wonderful change has come over you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't care nothing about what somebody else might say. Huh? But you know for yourself that a wonderful change has come over you. Praise the Lord. Praise. Let's give the Lord some more hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're glorifying. Amen. We do give honor, first of all, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Minister and staff, and your family, and all others who are here under the sound of my voice. It's another day that the Lord has given us. We're grateful for it. We are pretty close to uh, what, the 4th of July? Yes. Amen. Yes, the day when uh, this country was organized. Amen. 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 So much has changed since that day. Amen. But the Lord has us. Has blessed in a mighty way. Amen. Yes, the Lord has blessed in a mighty way. You yes, realize that after 246 years of being organized as a nation, our nation is experiencing a national state of political confusion. Yes. We are in a desperate need for prayer. If ever there was a time that God sings to pray for this country, that time is now. If ever there was a time for God's people to pray for peace all over this world, amen, that time is now. Saints all over the world, Christians all over the world need to pray fervently and effectually. Our world is in turmoil, amen. And we know that we're living in the last days. What has been pointed out in God's scriptures is being fulfilled, amen, amen. Amen. So I trust that we will continue to pray much, not just for this church, not just for yourself, not just for your family, not just for your aches and pains and this and that, but let us pray for our country. And let us pray for Biden and let us pray for our political leaders. Amen. Being divided on Capitol Hill, being divided on Capitol Hill is, is, is causing some problems. Amen. 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 And there's a threat in 24. Y'all know but who could get back in there. Amen. But let us let us pray and let us remember the vote. Amen. 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 And DC, DC, you know, DC has allowed medicinal marijuana to be purchased without a doctor's prescription. It is my prayer that church folk will refrain from presenting fake ailments in support of this unnecessary side. Huh? Yeah, you know, you ain't got, you don't get a leave it out of the prescription, just what I'm saying. You know, I think I need some of this, uh, you know, what a medicine up in here, you know what I'm saying. And they're willing to pass it on to you, sell it to you, whatever. Hey, amen, amen, you got to watch out for that. Got to, well, let's share that with you so y'all can be made aware of what's taking place, you know. The devil always had a way trying to uh, affect us in some way or another, as well as inflict us in some way or another. He wants to make it as easy as he possibly can. Amen. To that which is awfully tempting. Amen. Amen. But his, his main goal is to destroy. He has, a, he has an agenda to steal, to kill, and to destroy everything that's good about you. Everything that's holy about you. He wants to destroy. Amen. Because he's jealous of it. He used to have it himself, but he no longer have it because God kicked him out. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray that, that all of the people of this country, I mean all of the American citizens of this country, will believe the truth that's coming out in those committee hearing meetings and will act on it at the voting polls. Huh? And, you know, we got a lot of praying to do, you know what I'm saying? You know, I realize that sometimes we say things, well, you know, this is this, this is that, it's going to be, what's going to be, it's going to be, and all of this, and all. but we need to pray. Amen. What do you think the Lord saved you for? Amen. You know, to witness to others, to help build up the kingdom. Yes, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to pray. Why? Because you got power. Amen. You are connected. Yes, you have been connected to, to, to heaven. You can, your prayers can, can be answered. Amen. Yeah, amen. So let us be mindful of that. We need to pray, you know. 
Amen. I do believe that this is all that I have to share with you. We would like to also just say, make mention of Brother William Winston is present. Raise your hand, brother. Yeah, he's been out sick for a while, but man, he's got good. Amen. So good to see you, man. Amen. And yeah, we keep it in our prayers that the Lord will continue to bless and strengthen you and as well as heal. Amen. God is able to do that. Amen. We serve a God who has all power in his hands. I do believe these are all the announcements I like to, that I have. There are any other announcements that you like to have made, and that's that you please pass them to the pulpit by the way of the note. Amen. Amen. Y'all look so nice in your white. Amen. It's on the first Sunday. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's offering time. It's good to have some of the members of our choir back in the street. Amen.
was on that break. Really, we are grateful to what you have given in the Lord's house on this another Lord's day. May you be blessed abundantly in return. Amen. It's prayer time. Now that we have assembled together as a congregation of baptized believers in Christ, it is appropriate, it is befitting, and that we pray collectively. For we know prayer has a way of changing things. Prayer can make a sad heart glad. Prayer can remove anxiety, stress, and mental anguish. Praying fervently and effectually can take care of a lot of things that we as God's people need taken care of. I thank God for prayer. I use it all the time. The Lord didn't have to tell me but one time to pray without ceasing. Because that's what I do. I pray without ceasing. At this time we're going to have a altar call invocation. That's that we all stand at this time. As a church, we are coming together to pray together. Amen. Heaven expects that. Amen. Brother Lawson, but ask that you will come and lead us to the throne of grace. As he comes to pray, let us pray with him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up the time today yeah, to make it to the house of worship one more time. Yeah, Lord, Lord, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Yeah, yeah. If there be any sick among us, let's pray that our touch and heal right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Someone might have been affected oh. by COVID-19. Oh, and all this spread. We pray in the name of Jesus. You eradicate it. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray, Lord, that someone is going through some hard times. Someone, Lord, right now has financial issues. Someone right now has housing issues. Someone right now has a problem on their job. Lord, whatever it is, God, we know you're able to eradicate it right now. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, for our church. Okay, okay. In Jesus' name, bless. Pray, O oh God, for every family, God. Bless the families in the name of Jesus. Yes. Pray, O oh Lord, that thou will bless all the ministries of the church. In the name of Jesus. Bless every minister, bless every house, bless every family. In Jesus' name. Pray that I would bless our pastor. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Though we know that you're able to be everywhere at the same time. Not only in this country, but all over the world. Lord, there's a need for you to come in and bring about a change. Bless in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, when it's all said and done, and we can't come this way no more, pray that thou would give us a home in thy kingdom. We'll be able to praise your name forever. This we ask in no other name but the name of the above all names. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus and Christ. And all the people of God say, Amen. 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 To call it vacation. At this time, we're going to give way now to our musicians. Ask that they share with us a selection. Let us invest something into the service. Amen. Amen. In order that we can get something back out. Amen. Let us all praise the Lord. Let's have a good time in the Lord today. Let's give the Lord some more hands. Praise Amen. Praise the Lord.
Mark 5, verses 18. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. And all men did marvel. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. I want to talk on this title, An Indispensable Testimony. An indispensable testimony. That word indispensable means not to be neglected, not to be set aside. In this, an indispensable testimony. Amen. Amen. After you finish right, the, the, the indispensable testimony, look at your neighbor and say, and, and indispensable, indispensable testimony. testimony. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Let me find if you will. These recorded verses, these recorded verses, my beloved, of scripture that was read in your hearing are the postlude or epilogue of one man's journey from a painful existence to a new life in Christ. For these verses, these verses are a piece, that's all, it's just a piece of a captivating story of a man who was possessed not just by one devil, but by a legion of devils. Imagine, imagine the torment. For here was a man who was naked, void of all decency and acceptable behavior. He was, he was, he was an outcast, uncontrollable, unrestrained, and untamed. He had a violent temper and was a threat to himself and everyone around him. His mouth was full of cursing and bitterness. It was so that all human efforts to save him from himself had failed. He would have done anything to be well, but he had no power of his own to accomplish it. Now, now, stay with me, if you will. When, when we were unsaved, lost in a world of sin, could we have, in any way, form, or fashion, favored this man? In spite of the fact that, as an unsaved person, as an unsaved person out in the world at that particular time, we felt that we were all right the way we were. But again, but again, I say, could we have in any way, form, or fashion favored this man? Well, well, just listen to what Paul says about the nature of the unsaved. Even before we were saved, in Romans 3, uh, 10 through 18, the Word of God says that there is none righteous. No, not one. The Apostle Paul says, before we met Christ, before we met Christ, our throats were an open sepulcher. Our tongues were used to deceive. Our lips were the poison of a serpent. Our feet were swift to shed blood. Destruction, misery were in our way. And we had no real peace because 
We did not fear God. But thank God. Thank God for being able to say that you know for yourself that you have been blessed with salvation because salvation in Jesus is designed to deliver us from all of the above. From all of what was just mentioned as well as the tormenting flames of a burning hell. Talk to me somebody. What a mighty, what a mighty God we have who, who, who bestowed upon us who made possible salvation for our souls. Yes, yes. For you see, those who don't know Jesus are unaware that Jesus has heaven's authority to cleanse any man, no matter how corrupt, no matter how evil and sinful and despicable they may be. Oh yeah, God is able to cleanse them. In Mark's account of this possessed man, Jesus commanded the man uh, to be released from Satan's torment. And the legions of death heard the call of the master. And they left the man and jumped into a herd of swine. And instead of tormenting the swine, they called the swine to run off a steep cliff into the sea. And they all were drowned. Now, now those who served as the herders of the swine ran and told the owners of the herds as to what had happened. The owners ran to Jesus. Oh, yes, they did. They ran to Jesus to accuse him for their financial loss. Look what you've done. You've killed all of us. Talk to me, somebody. You've cost me a lot of money. Talk to me, somebody. They ran. The owners ran to Jesus to accuse him of their financial loss. No doubt, they stopped it in their tracks. And they saw the tormented man sitting at the feet of Jesus with clothes on that covered his nakedness and was mentally functioning in his right mind. And these witnesses, along with the owners, taking into consideration of what had happened, they asked Jesus to leave. We want you to leave. Talk to me somebody. We want you to get out of here. Why? Why? Because why? Because Jesus was perceived, no doubt, to be a religious Jew who had supernatural powers. And they being Gentiles, no doubt, feared that Jesus would activate another unusual event that might punish them for their sins and cause them more financial loss. Talk to me somebody. They wanted Jesus to leave. And y'all can pray with me. For you see, one should never, one should never ask Jesus to leave. Y'all can pray with me. Y'all can pray with me. Instead of asking Jesus to leave, you should have it stamped into your heart. With what the songwriter, with what the songwriter said, I need thee every hour. Most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace of me. I need the all I need. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. No, no, you just don't ask Jesus to leave thee. But instead, you tell Jesus, I come to thee. I wonder you're praying with me. Yes, yes, every time you go down on your knees and start praying. You're asking Jesus to come to you. Talk to me, somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? You're calling up heaven. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, yes, you're ringing up heaven. Yes, you are. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, yes. Now, 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 my beloved, according to the biblical account, after Jesus healed the man, the man wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to show appreciation for the healing by following Jesus. Jesus had done something spectacular for him. And he wanted to show appreciation by following Jesus. But he wasn't like, he wasn't like the nine lepers who after being healed by Jesus left and went on their way. But only one came back to say thank you. Yes, how precious it is to say thank you. But in all things we are to give thanks for this is the will of God through Christ Jesus. Oh yes, in the text, the man healed of the demons, wanted out of appreciation to follow Jesus. Therefore, he followed Jesus to the boat. But Jesus sent him back to the very people who had rejected him in his prior 
condition. Because it was truthfully so that this restored demonic man was now fit for missionary work. He was fit because he had an indispensable testimony. Talk to me. Yes. I know I'm afraid with me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a testimony yes. that had to be given. He had a testimony that had to be published. Yes. Y'all can pray with me. Yes. If you pray with me, everything yes. shall be all right. Yes, it's true, my beloved, that all of God's saints, even in this house today, also have an indispensable testimony. Yes. And it's certainly not beneficial to the kingdom of heaven for us to keep quiet about our conversion story. How, how easy it is to tell somebody about somebody else's business. But when it comes to the valuable news of your eternal conversion, you need to run and tell that. Talk to me. If you can run and tell everything else, you ought to be able to run and tell about your eternal conversion. If you can call on the phone or text, email, tweet, and post news about your earthly business, then there should be no fool when it comes to sharing the good news about your heavenly conversion. Talk to me, somebody. Now, as a church member, stay with me just for a little while. It'll be long. Now, as a church member, have you ever considered how many people that know you and have watched you and have interacted with you and they may be in doubt about your conversion. Talk to me somebody. Let that sink in a little bit. Huh? Yeah, people that have known you, watched you, have interacted with you and may be in doubt about your conversion. I know you say you're saved. I know you say you're church member. I know you say you're born this minute. I know you say you come to church. But they have watched you and interacted with you. And they may be in doubt about your conversion. Maybe they have forgotten about to judge not least she be judged. Talk to me somebody. So therefore, so therefore, therefore, first of all, first of all, first of all, it ought to be so that your visible testimony should be a living confirmation. Talk to me somebody. Yes, there should be visible proof that Christ has changed you. Talk to me somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? The things you used to do, you no longer care to do because Christ has changed you. You know that he has changed you. Talk to me somebody. The people who knew you before your conversion should be able to see that you are convinced that the blood of Jesus has washed your sins away. You should be convinced that something divine made you whole. You might feel like concurring with the hymn writer who said, What is this that makes me feel so good right now? What is this that makes me want to run on anything? Whatever it is, it won't let me hold peace. Talk to me somebody. Y'all will pray with me. Salvation, salvation is a serious issue. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yes, 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 yes. There may be those who may know you from way back. And based on the change you've told them you've made, they may have a, a desire to perform a psychological litmus test on you without you knowing about it. Talk to me somebody. Yeah, for you see, people watch more than just you coming to church. They also watch you after you leave the church. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? But you see, but you see, dressing up and, and coming to church on a Sunday morning is the easy part. But how you handle the hell in your life and the temptations you encounter the rest of the week is really how you are measured as a Christian. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? But when your life for the most part, is lived for the glory of God. Then God's kingdom is built. When folk see that something has made you more generous, something 
has made you more forgiving. Yes. Something yes. has made you more humble. Yes. Something yes. has made you more loving. Yes. But our transformation yes. occurred within. Yes. It should be visible. Yes. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? Y'all going to pray with me? Secondly, I'll be through in a minute. Secondly, we find that your verbal testimony is to be considered. It's to be considered. But not only should it be considered, but when it has the strength to be compelling. Your story is then unique and needs to be told. Talk to me somebody. Let me run that by you again. The testimony is to be considered. Yes, your verbal testimony is to be considered. But not only should it be considered, but when it has the strength to be compelling, your story is then unique and needs to be told. The world needs to hear about the burdens Christ replaced in your life with blessings. And the foolishness he replaced with wisdom. Your friends as well as strangers that you cross paths with. Talk to me, son. Need to hear about how you walked out of darkness into the marvelous light of Christ. Love and mercy. There's folks that know you. They have seen how Satan kicked you down in the past. Now they need to hear how Christ lifted you back up. Talk to me, somebody. They may have seen how Satan had you bound in sin, but now they need to hear how Christ set you free. They need to hear it. They may have seen. They may have seen how you were drowning, drowning in worldly sorrow. But now they need to hear how Christ brought you real joy. Yes, you should tell them the story. You should tell them the story how you went from sinful and tainted and tarnished all the way to be pleased in the eyes of God. Yes, you must tell them. You must tell them how you had a could care less attitude about Christ. But now you have found him to be the best friend that you could ever have. So tell them. Yes, yes. So tell them how you were blind at one time to God's righteousness. But now you can see clearly the righteous way of the Lord. And you see, your indispensable testimony is the story of how you went from sinner to saint. Lost to found. Pathetic to precious and guilty to forgive. Yes. yes, lift your voices and let your story compel others to come to Christ. Yes, when your visible and verbal testimonies are confirming, yes, then they should also be compelling. They should be an awareness that in this day and age, but all of the people that's dying not knowing Christ. Now to be so that there should be an awareness in this day and age. Uh, your person's testimony is greatly needed and tremendously crucial. Right. Yes, the man healed. The man healed of a legion of devils had a testimony that was tremendously crucial. Why so, preacher? Why so, preacher? Because it was where he lived. For he lived in an area called Decapolis, which was a region of ten cities not far from Jesus' home, but was considered by the Jews to be completely, completely dead. Are you going to pray with me? Yeah, but this is where Jesus told him to testify. Are you going to pray with the man who wanted to follow Jesus? Jesus was going to the boat, the man wouldn't follow Jesus. Jesus told him, no, no, don't follow me. You go back to your home. That's where I want you to go back, and I want you to go back and testify. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why, why? Because the communist where his home was, was completely pagan. This is where Jesus told him to testify. And the man did as Jesus instructed him. And because Jesus had instructed him, and notice I said, because Jesus had instructed him, I believe his testifying spread like wildfire. Yeah. When it was the witness of a healed man and his encounter with Jesus showing himself. Yeah. That's how the 
good they were good. Bring him here and talk to me somebody. Break him with chains and little cotton. Hollering and screaming and cursing. I don't care. I'm here. I'm Talk to me somebody. I don't care. I don't
talk to me somebody. Your sister didn't say it, but I know you said it. Hallelujah. Talk to me somebody. When you feel the moving of the spirit on the altars of your heart, I know you said it. Hallelujah. Talk to me somebody. Every now and then. You don't come closer, but every now and then I feel it moving on the altars of my heart. I find myself saying, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you brought me. Thank you for help. what you brought me. How to thank you, Jesus. Yes, as I use, as I use my sanctifying imagination upon this healed man in the text. If he was familiar with the hymns of our day and age, I believe his testimony would also include the words saying, there is not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. But that's been healed all my soul disease. No, not one, no, no one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide until the day is done. There is not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He died on Calvary's cross. Do you believe he died on Calvary's cross? Yeah, they took it down and they laid him in a bottle too. Do you believe they laid him in a bottle? Do you think that he's still in that tomb? Or do you believe that God has died on Sunday morning on the third day morning? He died out with all the power. I know he died on the third day morning. Good son, he's still up with me. Talk to me somehow. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. When I'm feeling depressed, he gets out with me. Talk to me somehow. When I'm stressed out, he gets out with me. Talk to me. I know he got up, but he lives, oh yes again. He's lived, he lives, he's not a dead God. He lives, he lives within me. He lives within my walk. He lives within my doctor. He lives within my prayer. He lives within my preaching. He lives within my life. He lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise the name. Doors are open. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe somebody here today. I don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins. You need to come. If you've never been baptized, if you need to be reinstated, you need to come. If you don't have a church home, you need to come. Maybe somebody. Maybe somebody present today. The need that needs to join. God, child, time is winding up. The days of perilous. Yes. Yes, the times are dark. Amen. All around us, we can see what's happening. Not only to our country, but also to our world. Amen. We who are the light, part of the light of the world, we ought to let our light so shine before men that they may see the goodness of the Lord. That they may see the salvation of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, the compassion of the Lord in us, in our living. Amen. Is there one? Won't you come? Is there one? Go with the open on this first Sunday. On this first Sunday of July. The year is halfway over. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for how you have brought us. In the midst of pain, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of trials and tribulations, you have brought us. Our souls look back. Thank you, Lord, in spite of this pandemic, you still have brought us. You still caring for us. You still keeping food on our table and clothes for us to wear. Safety. When we go out, you're still with us. We thank you, Lord God. Oh. Thank you. Is there one? Is there one? God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Three days later. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Give the Lord some hand raise.
At this time, we're going to prepare and make ready for the partaking of the Lord's Supper. We do know that this is the first Sunday. Usually we have observance of our Holy Communion. Amen. It's one of the ordinances of the church. Amen. The Bible has informed us that a man examine himself. He will eat of his bread and drink of his wine and the welcome of Eat of the drink of damnation to his own soul. Amen. There may be somebody who do not wish to remain at this particular time. You may be excused. Amen. Amen. I ask now that uh, we proceed. Amen. This is a very sacred hour. Amen. Scriptures instructs us and informs us that after Jesus had completed his evangelistic tour, Jesus realizing that the day of the Passover was fast approaching. Upon realizing this, he instructed that two of his disciples was to go into the city. Upon entering the city, there was to come upon a man bearing a pitcher of water. Then he went to follow this man into a house, then into a large furnished upper room. And in this large furnished upper room, they were to make the necessary preparations for the Last Supper. After the preparations had been made, and after Jesus and all of his disciples had so very faithfully assembled around the table, Jesus gave thanks for both the bread and the wine, the bread which represented his broken body and Calvary, the wine which represented his precious shed blood. We realize that we are not fortunate enough to experience hearing the precious voice of Jesus as he gave thanks for both the bread and the wine. But right here we're going to ask that Reverend Jackson will ask God's blessings upon this bread and upon this wine, ask that God will change it from a common to a spiritual use. Reverend Jackson, amen. Father God, we come once again, yes, standing yes. before the sacred table. We ask you first of all, as you word have instructed us to do, to ask you to forgive us for our yes, sins, Lord Jesus. Cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, that we don't eat and drink our blood and drink damnation to our soul. Your word says for that cause many of us are sick, sick and many of us are sick. But Lord God, and then we ask you to take this carnal wine and bread and turn it into a spiritual uh, element, turn it into spiritual elements that we will feel, that we will observe and be concerned as we eat and drink of your broken body and your shed blood. God, we thank you again for another opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. 
Yeah, I guess you can go straight down. 